Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I did promise I'd bring you the final Guild Wars beta event, and that's exactly what I'm doing right here. Welcome to the red team. The red team's probably going to get their ass kicked, as they have a tendency to do. But what did they give us more to the point? Was it a giant dragon to slay, or was it an army of orcs to lay to waste? No, it was not. It was, in fact, the Hunger Games, or Hunger Royale, as they were calling it. So the name of the game is this. Your entire team of tributes, or in this case they're called assassins, are sent into a large arena, which is essentially an instance version of the Matrika province. You are given a gun with five different abilities that you can see down to the bottom there, and a set of basic items which will take up the spaces from six through to zero on your bar to the bottom there. What you have to do is constantly forage for food as you are losing health. So you're going to be looking for rations and being careful not to pick up the exploding rations, which are essentially a landmine you can place that looks like rations. Now, the entire pack is moving around here, which sounds like a great idea because there are three other teams also on this map also trying to survive. So surely you want to stick with people. Well, no, actually, you really wouldn't. And the reason is, of course, that you can't find any food. There isn't enough food to go around if you stick together, which is what makes the mode actually kind of interesting. Everyone is making a mad dash for as many supplies as they could possibly find. Not only that, but the gun has limited ammunition. The little green icon down to the bottom, just above the skill bar to the right there. So you'll have to head to recharge stations to get extra ammo, as well as finding ammunition on the ground and on the corpses of enemies. If you kill an enemy, then it's going to drop everything that the enemy possesses. Now at the moment, we're in our no respawn penalty phase. After this, it's going to be sudden death. Once you're dead, you're dead. And you do take a little bit of part in the game, but not exactly the way that you might hope. I'm going to be cutting this video just because there's a whole lot of nothing going on. I decided to break off from the pack here and take a little bit of swimming, see what I could find. Every now and again, it's possible to find some supplies underwater, which consist of the ration supplies, ammunition, exploding rations, which you can lay to try and fool your opponents, an assassin's cloak, a reflective energy wall, which can be used to reflect projectiles, and very rarely a teleportation device. You can find a few items along the side of the coast right there. Very handy indeed. And the rest of my team has just run off. You'll also notice on the minimap down at the bottom, there are five gears. These are the supply posts, and I suppose they put them there to try and lure folks into a potential battle. Kind of like the cornucopia from the Hunger Games, I suppose. It's an interesting little mode. It really is. I am not surprised that people got a little bit upset with it because I suppose they wanted a big epic dragon fight, but obviously someone put quite a bit of effort into this, and I really hope that the devs aren't actually discouraged by the response of a lot of the beta testers who got very, very bitchy about it and demanded that something better be put in place, which was a rather annoying thing indeed. I caution against using the word entitlement because it's so often misused, but I think calling them entitled, considering it was a free beta test and the event was put together without there even needing to be one, well, honestly, I'd say that term actually fits this time around. I'll skip forward and show you a little bit of action with this gun. After quite a few minutes of searching around the place, I came upon a curious creature. More to the point, one of the assassins from the Why enemy team. Help me. As my Asura continually complains that he's dying. So the gun's got a few different abilities, including that big volley that requires you to stand still, a flame shot which can be charged up. It's essentially a sniper ability. And there's also a rocket jump with the weapon. You can also butt with the gun, which will allow you to knock back and knock over an opponent for a little while. It doesn't require any ammo. Steal as much of his stuff as I possibly can and then run away, quite frankly. That seems like the best way of doing things. I engage my assassin's cloak to try and get out of there. Unfortunately, I discovered it only lasts for a few seconds. And it seems like trying to take out this guy might not have been the best idea. It did a lot of damage, but... Evidently not enough, and I just ate a sniper shot, which uh, yeah, might very well put me under. What I really should have done here was actually lay one of those reflective walls and then try to escape the area, but it's not going to happen. I get stuck into a corner, and, well, horrible death is all that follows. Dodge or no dodge, I think I'm not going to be surviving this day. Perhaps I should have used the rocket jump or something. I go in for the engagement, do a little bit of damage, but flat on my ass I am. So that respawns you. We're currently in the no death penalty phase, so it's really not all that important. This was designed, I think, for people to kind of get a feel for it and actually experiment with what's going on. All of your items are reset, you spawn back at the start, and you go back into the field for yet more hunting. Now, 
Let's get to sudden death, shall we? Because that's where the game really starts to get a little bit tense. Here we go, sudden death. And not all that many people remaining alive, actually. Quite surprising. We were on the overflow server, so I think that our game was a little bit smaller than people that got onto the main server. But regardless, there are four teams, and they're all dying horribly. I decided to stick with this guy. It seems like a safe bet. And we spot an enemy player from the blue team in the distance. It took me a while to figure out that the way to actually catch up to people in this mode is to use the rocket jump ability. Like, oh, let's just chase after him and occasionally dash. Hopefully he'll get stuck in a corner or maybe he won't see us. That's also a possibility. Grab that item on the ground right there and try and get in just a little bit closer so we can take him out. He goes to one of these supply posts which allow him to gain a bunch of ammunition back. Now, hopefully, we should be able to hunt him down. Every now and again, it's going to give an update in the corner as to how many players are remaining. At the moment, the blue team doing fairly well. Ours suffering somewhat, I've got to say. Now, this is a really cool mode that I actually like to see them incorporate into the game in some way. I know it was part of an exclusive beta event, but I think that you can actually make this work, especially with the tournament ticket system. So, those of you who don't know, you can buy tournament tickets in the microtransaction store, which are, of course, for PvP tournaments that have cash and prizes and crazy stuff like that. I think you could also have something like this. I would maybe do away with the whole team-based aspect of it and just make it a every-man-for-himself kind of survival. I don't know how that would really work with spawns. I think you'd have to have this crazy random spawn going on. As far as I'm concerned, I would start everyone with a bundle, which is essentially their fists, and then have this big area of weapons and bundles and items in the center, i.e. a cornucopia. Might as well. I mean, for God's sake, it's obvious what your influences are. You're wearing them on your sleeve, so why not emulate just a little bit more? Have people either go fighting or go into the area outside of the cornucopia battle zone and try to hide, if at all possible. Stay out of the way. Try to forage. And then, of course, have to deal with various hazards. That would be kind of wonderful. I would play the hell out of that mode. And then, of course, have it be sudden death. Now, what happens when you die in this mode is you turn into a little robot. That robot can help out. He can do a sensor pulse, which will reveal nearby enemies. He can also deploy a shield wall. And that's really about it. <laughs> Not a huge amount otherwise. So, by the end of this game, things did get just a little bit silly as a result of there being so many robots and not an awful lot of anything else. I spy an enemy in the woods. Let's go and deal with him. So we'll be able to dodge out of the way of the majority of this volley. Dodge is really cool in this mode because you are so limited in terms of the ammunition and weapon abilities that you actually have at your disposal. Eat a rifle butt to the face. Not exactly why I would call helpful another volley. Will I be able to take him out more to the point we should be able to rocket jump? And I'm afraid not. Down I go. And I am a robot. What can I say? Let's skip to the end and just show you how silly this gets. Behold the little gang of robots that we happen to have here surrounding our friendly teammates. And what they can do is throw down a shield every now and again. They can also drop ammunition. And they can do a sensor pulse, which unfortunately also reveals nearby enemy robots, which is incredibly irritating. Doesn't really tell you where you need to go whatsoever. It's a cool little mode. I think they could seriously refine it and actually make a very enjoyable and unique PvP experience. I would be totally up for that. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're going to code something like this, then why waste it? Put something like that into the live game. I think some people would very much appreciate the Hunger Royale contest. It's definitely doable. I really don't get all the complaining. I think that it's very sad when a developer puts something rather unique and cool together when they don't have to for a final beta event. And then people just bitch and whine about it because they don't understand it and didn't bother to read the instructions at the start of the particular game mode. Very cool nonetheless, folks. Hunger Royale for Guild Wars 2. Let's hope that we see it in some form in the live game. My name has been Total Biscuit, and I'll see you next time.